Okay. Um, I'm Miss Sandy. I'm introducing myself to you all once again. And these are my helpers, Colin Hello. and Carlos. And today we are going to do something different. Some of you all have done this before and some of you have not. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. As you know, after the bread is consecrated, and what that means is that it's after the sacred words are said. And the sacred words are, what are they? Remember, this is my body, this is my blood. Those are the sacred words. And only a priest has the power to say that. I could stand there all day, and I'm not going to be able to make Jesus come alive in a piece of bread. Huh? Only a man who is ordained a priest has that power within him. And remember what I said once before. He's not saying, this is Jesus' body. He's saying, this is my body. So that Jesus is kind of like right there in, in him, saying, this is my body. It's almost like a reenactment, but it's really a memorial. It's to remember, because that's what Jesus said, remember me. So this is how we remember him. This is how we always have him with us. So, um, and then today, we have the uh, custom of talking to Jesus face to face. Now, you know, when you talk to a friend, you want to sit down and you want to just talk back and forth, huh? Yeah. You don't want to talk to your friend if he's in the other room. You want to sit there close and one person talks and the other person listens and then the one who was talking listens and the other person talks, huh? This is called a conversation, back and forth. It's not a conversation if somebody just does all the talking, huh? So we want, many people want to have that conversation with Jesus, and we give them an opportunity at certain times, and all of the churches do this, but they do it at different times, of putting Jesus out to be adored and making them, making him available to us, to the people who can go there at the time. So the people like to say to Jesus, um, whatever's on their mind. Jesus, um, I have a sick mother. My dog just got run over. My husband lost his job. Jesus, what we're going to do, huh? Everything. My teenager is giving me a lot of trouble. Please help me with this. Help me to, to learn how to say the things that he needs to hear. People have difficulties in their lives. Nobody has a charmed life. So, people like to sit down and talk to Jesus, and we make it available, and they can stay in there as long as they like. Huh? And at the end, like at 6 o'clock in the evening, that's when they come and they put, take Jesus out of the big gold holder, which is called the monstrance. Say that word? Monstrance. And then they put him back in the tabernacle. So, but until that time, Jesus is right there in the chapel, and people are sitting in there praying to him. Okay, now what we're going to start is, we're going to start having small groups go into the chapel, and uh, Colin is going to show you all, just stand against the wall and talk to Jesus for just a, uh, just a minute or two, and then come back in. Now you must be very quiet in there, because they have other people in there. Okay, why don't you three go... them back because we have to get them all in and out. So this is why, um, you know, Jesus had said, I want you all to go. You're sent. Just like the apostles are sent, we are all sent. 
to tell people about him. Because much of the world still doesn't know about him. Okay, let's see, you three. Okay, and then if you three will be after them. Go ahead, sweet. And stand in the back and be very quiet. Okay, um, do you all have any questions? Yeah. I remember you all when you were little. And, uh, yes. Right. So, um... I am going to tell you all a little story after everybody gets in and out because I'm not going to have time to repeat it. But at any rate, it's, uh, it's, it's again, it's a true story and it's like, um, it's like the dog story with the, with the tabernacle. It, I didn't tell you all that story either, did I? You told us last week. I told you last week. Okay, well you're so smart. Right. Okay. So at any rate, this is why we have this. People just feel that they need to pour out their hearts. Things can go very wrong. Yes. And nobody lives a charmed life. There's always problems. No matter how great your life is, how wonderful your job is, how much money you have, uh, what's going on, there's always things happen. And if you have Jesus as your friend, you've got the best friend that there is. All right, uh, the next three, okay, go on. How are we doing on time? Uh, we have 11 minutes left. Okay, good. Okay, and it'll be... I want you all to go to three and three. Okay. Right now? No, no. And just, it, you know, when those come back. I want you all to make that, um, connection. that connection, that visit. And we call this the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. Exposition is just a noun for meaning we've exposed Jesus. We have it locked him away in the tabernacle which is where he normally is. Just once a week, we put him out on an altar for everybody to see. And if everybody, if anybody wants to come and talk face to face, that's what it's there for. People don't have to do this, but some people choose to do this. And so we do it and we make it available for them to see and just to talk to them. Okay. Okay, um, okay, the next three. Upsy daisy. Okay, so Gona, why don't you stay with you? Oh, okay. Maybe we four. That's hard. Huh? Well, no, we still got these three. We're going to get everybody in. Because it may have been a while since they have seen Jesus in the monstrance. Okay, girls, come back and sit where you were sitting. Come this way, sweetheart. Don't be so far over there. Come sit next to her. And you come sit next to her. Right. That's good. Okay. As soon as they get back, I'm going to go ahead and tell the story. How are we doing on time? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. We can wait. Does anybody have any questions? You know, this idea of Jesus being in the host is very, very old. There use, uh, since, since the Mass was started, when Jesus went on back to heaven and he said, I'm going to stay with you. This is what he was talking about, that he, he started this ability of the apostles, his priests, to bring him back down, and so that he really is with us. And when we take him into our mouth, he's right there in our stomach. That doesn't, you don't get any closer to anybody that they're right side, inside of you, in your stomach, huh? Okay, last three, okay. So this is why we do this, because um, we want
want people to be able to see. Now, from the beginning, when the, you know, the Romans really, really were persecuting the Christians, they had to go hide, and sometimes the Romans, well, very often, the Romans would kill them because they had a different religion. They believed that their emperor was God. And of course, we don't believe that at all. There's no person that's God. There are persons who are holy. There are persons who are saints. But no person is God. We're just human beings. Huh? Even Mary was a human being, right? So she wasn't God. But this is why we, we do this. And many times, the Romans would, if they could get their hands on the Blessed Sacrament, they would desecrate it. That would mean they would stomp on it and, and disrespect it. Huh? And there were many people, and there was a young boy named Tarsisius. You've heard of him, huh? Yes, he was one of my favorites when I was a kid. Tarsisius was a young guy, like an altar boy, and he was bringing the, the, uh, the host, and the Romans attacked him, and Tarsisius was a martyr. He gave up his life to defend the host. You know, the host was falling on the ground, and he was trying to, to eat him as quickly as he could, because he knew that he was going to be gone. They were going to kill him. So he's a martyr, a young boy named Tarsisius, and he lived in the Roman times. Five minutes. Okay. Now, this is what I wanted to tell you, and this is a true story, just like my dog's story, which maybe I'll tell you all tomorrow. But um, there was a woman in a church in Metairie a number of years ago, but not, not a long, long time ago. And this church was St. Francis Xavier, and it was on... And it's still there, but they built a new church. But this happened in the little old wooden church. And this woman is sitting there in the church, and she's got her prayer book, and she's by herself, and she hears a man's voice says, Why don't you close the book and just talk to me? Man, she looks around. She looks around. There's nobody there. So she thinks, did I just imagine that? So she starts reading her prayers again. And this man's voice comes and says, why don't you close the book and just talk to me? Well, by that time, she figured, think of a close the book. And it was Jesus talking to her, telling her prayers of God. But I want to hear what you think. I want to hear your thoughts, your, your problems. Close the book and talk to me. That's exactly what Jesus is still saying to us. But he said it to her in a special way. And of course, she came out of that church very different from what she walked in. She knew that she had been talked to by God himself. And there was no other person. It was a small church. She looked all over to see if there was a man hiding somewhere playing a trick on her. There was nobody in that little wooden church. There was no place to hide. So it really was Jesus talking to her out loud, and he really got her attention. So this is a true story. So think about that. Sometimes you can read your prayers, but don't forget to just shut the book and talk to him. Huh? He knows all about you, and he knows what's going on with you. So this is what I want to encourage you to do. Huh? Okay, so that will be, I think, time for us. Uh, we're going to meet next tomorrow in back in the church. Alrighty, so you all can go. Thank you.